Hey guys and gals, it's me George, the Shade Tree Fix-It Man, and I've got an update for you on the Goofy Cart. Uh, you can see the back wheels are off of it, but something else you can see, let me zoom in there, is we have our new front tires on there. And those are the ones we're going to be using. How do you like them puppies, huh? That's not the color the wheels are going to be. They're eventually going to be uh, red. Yep. But I won the auction this week and got the two tires with tubes in them. And uh, it was only like $20, $22 for the pair with the tubes, which is a good deal. And those are trailer tires and they're like brand new. Still got some nubbies on them. Still can see the color on the tread where they mark them. So I'm happy about that, but that's uh, that's one thing. But now the other major thing that we've been working on today, and uh, I haven't been out working on the goofy car all week, pretty much, because I've been busy with lawnmowers and golf carts and running here and running there and uh, helping other folks so I didn't have time to work on the goofy cart but today Saturday I finally got some time and uh, <clears throat> as you can see I've started roughing in my chain and drive system from the transmission all the way back to the rear axle now this is not necessarily the final iteration of it as you can see there are clamps holding various pulleys in place and so forth uh, and I have uh, let me see one two three about five or six chains hooked together to make up the length that I've got here and they're not all the right size even but I have <clears throat> a new piece of chain coming so that we'll be able to make up one good chain and uh, when I get that here sometime next week, then I'll be able to start finalizing some of this. And now that I have it this far, um, I know about where my rear wheels are going to be and how that's going to be set up. And things are changing uh, as far as the mounting of my rear wheels. So let me take you in close and we'll see what we got going. Okay, I'm going to get you right down here close and personal. And we're going to start at the front uh, with our transmission. And the gear on the top is the one from the transmission. And then the second one down is an idler. And that's one that actually came with the transmission on the, uh, on the old uh, Montgomery Ward. Now, obviously, it's going to be pulling from the top and so I started working my way back from the top and with it pulling I need something to keep my pressure on here and uh, so it keep it tight there without pulling way up because I don't want it getting way up in the way of our legs so I'm trying to keep it down as low as possible so we got this idler pulley here and this is none of this is really tight but you can see it's going to, uh, let me tighten it up a little bit, it's going to be close to parallel with the frame along the top and the body is kicked over because I'm going to have to make a cut in the back of the body because it won't clear this setup down in here and that's just tacked in place but there's uh, bushings on there double bushings and I have another bracket that will be welded on the outside of the frame here and uh, that gear will bring our chain well it's going to come over this pulley here which is helping to hold it up and we may have to put another one in the middle here I don't know until I actually try it because you got to remember the top chain, top of the chain always will have tension on it. So then this will come over this pulley and come under this sprocket. And the reason I wanted a sprocket here that's nice and solid to keep it, uh, keep the chain in the right place 
as it heads on up to our rear axle and the rear sprocket. And originally we were going to have that sprocket and differential mounted to the outside with the wheel mounted directly to it. But because of the location of the chain coming back, it's needful for it to be in board of where our wheels are going to be. So that's not a problem and it may get flipped around yet. I'm not sure exactly. I've got it on what would be called backwards because the uh, white piece on the right there is the flange that uh, would have the wheel bolted to it. But at any rate, whether it's flipped around one way or the other doesn't really matter too much. But we have it so it's lined up. It comes around that sprocket and then comes down here. Now the bottom is going to have lots of slack on it um, because that's the take up side and to keep too much slack out uh, too much slack from being there I put another roller here coming off of the sprocket to make sure it's keeping some tension on the sprocket itself and uh, you can see right here I got two different sizes of chain going on right there yep and then it's going to come down and it has to clear this pulley although I say it has to clear it, it might not have to but I have it coming down below it and I actually have another little sprocket down here that is mounted in a um, well homemade pillow block for want of a better term it's actually two bearings inside there with a piece of tubing holding the bearings and the sprocket and the shaft and that flange on the back side all turn so I have to make up a bracket to mount this to the frame and uh, I'm gonna have to make some adjustments to it obviously and then as it carries forward further we come up here and we need to make sure that it clears the bottom of our radius rod so we have another guide that'll hold it down below there and then come back up around and back up to our sprockets on the transmission and I may actually have to put another pulley in here don't know but depending on how much slack it's going to have I may have to put another one in here just to hold that up there which is not a big deal but all of that comes together so that we have our drivetrain going all the way back for the most part, it doesn't hang down too much from the bottom of the frame. There is a little bit of hanging down, but not too bad. And you've got to remember, uh, we have plenty of clearance to the ground back here um, because we have it jacked up in the back end. And of course, it's dropped in the front with our dropped axle. Look at them wheels, tires. Woohoo! So anyway, that's where we're at. So hopefully I'll get my new chain. Sorry for the shaky camera. Uh, it's going on 8 o'clock, the end of the day, and I've been out here putzing with this most of the day, trying all kinds of different things. And I'm using what I have to put it together with. So, uh, yeah. Um, I'm sure that there's going to have to be some more modifications made to it before we're done just because um, we have no power to it and we haven't run any power up against it yet. So that would be, uh, will be after we get the rear end mounted. Now that I have my drivetrain set up, I can start working more on getting my rear axle located and the suspension put on it and uh, things like that you know what I mean so that will be our next project and I'm thinking I have another lawnmower I have to work on on Monday maybe too but uh, maybe Monday I'll get back on this and try and figure out our suspension for the back end. Um, 
Yeah. Should be interesting because as you can see, our bearing carriers are quite a bit outboard of our frame which means I'm probably going to have to put some kind of bracket coming across the frame so that my shock absorbers can run down pretty close to being straight and tie that whole thing together and uh, still got to work on mounting our brakes and that hub set up there and so yeah still lots to do no Noah, we're not even close to being ready to ride it yet. So, till next time, guys and gals, this is George, the Shade Tree Fix It Man, saying thanks for watching and following along. And uh, we'll see you again real soon, I hope. Bye now.